What's going on, everybody? My name is Justin, and welcome to Gaming at its Core, Episode 4. Today, we're joined by quite a lot of people, so I'm going to introduce them all one by one. So first off, we have the usual people, Online ZHD. What's up? Uh, we have Blue Danger. Yo. And Meal Kick Media. Hey. And today, we're also joined by a very special guest, so yeah, you can go ahead and introduce yourself. Oh, God, I've even pronounced my own name now. Great. What's up, everybody? Good <laughs> morning, Gaming here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> So yeah, of course, <laughs> so Gaming at its Core is our weekly slash bi-weekly podcast. Um, last week, we didn't have a podcast because all of us were, were quite busy. Um, so yeah, we're back this week. And of course, we have Robin with us today. So um, today we have four different segments that we're going to be talking about. Of course, the thing we always start with is what have we all been playing with playing this week? So Play I'm going to let Robin God. start. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, what have I been playing this week? I mean, basically, like nowadays, I'm very busy with the with the channel at the moment. So when I play, it's usually just when I'm streaming. So uh, I'm still still playing Uncharted for multiplayer all the time. Uh, <laughs> Screw yep, yep. I got uh, a Parappa the Rapper remastered, and I, I, I platinum that pretty much. Um, yeah, I think that's that's about it. Oh, I tried Rainbow, Rainbow Six Siege yesterday uh, for one of my first first times, pretty much. Uh, yeah, it's yes. pretty cool. It's pretty cool. All right, blue. Um, this week I've finished off Zelda Breath of the Wild um, yeah. on Monday, I think. Um, then I jumped back into Horizon and got me Platinum Trophy in there. Um, I bought and game share quite a lot of games this week. I bought Ratchet & Clank, I bought Dear Esther, and I bought Machinarium. I've uh, been playing them, beat all three of them. Um, yeah. And the games that I game shared that I've played so far was Drive Club, Rocket League, Apotheon, Rogue Legacy, and Pixel Junk. All really good indie games. And Drive Club's a very good graphical showcase. So, yeah, that's me for the week. Nice. Brandon? Um, this week, school's been a pain in the ass. But when I've been able to play, I checked out Drawn to Death, and that's actually pretty good. I guess we'll talk about it later when we do our like releases of the week. Um, but any, I, when the Uncharted 4 update hit, I did check out the new map in private settings, like in a private match, but I could not like search for the, like, I didn't, I didn't like, I don't know, like whenever like new maps come out for Uncharted 4, like I feel inclined, but this one, I don't know. I just never felt inclined to just, you know, have a chance of seeing the new map in the map pool for online, but I'm guessing that will change if I get interested into the game eventually. But right now I just been focused on drawn to death and I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. Dan? Um, well, I was originally supposed to be getting Horizon Zero Dawn this week, but as soon as I went to my local like store to get it, my credit card for some reason was locked up, so then I have spent like the whole week trying to figure out what the hell's happened to it. So, yeah, my plan for Horizon's kind of screwed up. So in the meantime, I've been playing a bit of Uncharted 4. Um, I've been getting back into, or at least trying to get back into Battlefield 1 yet again, because I'm just really falling out of love with that game. Um played a bit of Titanfall 2. Gonna get roasted yet again for this one for the third week FIFA in a row. 17. I played FIFA, FIFA 17. Yeah, Please yeah. kill me now. I know, I know, I'm a casual, but yeah. I've tried I've tried to progressively play it less so that I can't be called a casual as much as I usually am. So yeah. Eventually I'll only get around to playing maybe about 15 hours a week. So that's just not maybe as bad as what I usually spend. So but yeah, that's pretty much me done for this week. Like I haven't really been able to play a lot because Obviously, I was on holiday last week, so I've been spending all this week trying to, you know, catch up with college and then work as well with, like, the work tests and stuff like that. So, yeah, that's me pretty much for this week. Yeah. All right. Well, for me, I mean, if I have to be completely honest, I haven't really played too much. Um, yeah, I've also had quite a busy week at school, so I've had a lot of, like, tests and stuff to study for. What I have played, though, I played just a bit more of Uncharted 4 multiplayer. I tried out the new map. Um, I also played a bit of Black Ops 3 multiplayer, and I think I, yeah, I started, I just went back and played the beginning of Uncharted Drake's Fortune again. I just felt like playing it again, so yeah, I went back to that and played a bit of Uncharted Drake's Fortune, and yeah, other than that, I haven't really played too much, so. Mm -hmm. Nice. All right, so next up, we can move on. All right, so we can move on to the news of the week, so to be honest, this week has been, I guess, kind of lackluster in terms of gaming news at least i mean there hasn't been that much like at least interesting stuff um but of course the xbox scorpio or project scorpio i should say um we the specs were revealed by digital foundry and we're obviously we're not going to go like too in depth with all the specs and stuff but i think it's safe to say that the xbox scorpio is like 
super powerful, especially when compared yeah. to like all the other consoles, mm -hmm. not just the, you know, the standard Xbox one, but also the PS4 and the PS4 Pro. So um, guys, I would like to know your thoughts on basically how the Xbox Scorpio is going to like affect the, you know, the gaming industry as a whole. And also if you think you're going to be getting one later this year. So if one of you would like to go. Rob, might as well go first. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, <laughs> oh man. Uh, I mean, like, uh, I, I don't think I'll be getting a Scorpio at this point, at least, because uh, the way I'm looking at it is like, I have a gaming PC already and it's just looking like, although the Scorpio is better than the PS4 Pro, for example, yeah, uh, it's still not as good as my PC, you know? Mm -hmm. So, so for me, it is about the games really. And Microsoft at the moment has a big problem there, I would say. Uh, so, you know, of course, E3 is coming up in two months from now. So I have to kind of wait and see what games they're going to announce, hopefully a lot and, and, you know, exciting stuff. Games that I'm really, you know, that I would want to get a console like that for. But then at the same time, I'm realizing, well, they're bringing them out on PC. So what's really the point? You know, I can play them there nonetheless. So yeah. Yeah. for me, it's really hard as somebody who plays on PC already and who has hardware that's better than the Scorpio to really say, you know, oh, yeah, I should get a Scorpio. Like mm -hmm. the PS4, the advantage that it has is the exclusives, right? So those games you can literally only play there but with the scorpio you don't you're not gonna have that so for me personally like yeah i mean it's 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 looking i mean it's cool once again for xbox fans i've, I've said it in a video of mine it's cool you know for the people that really like uh, the xbox in general and that will upgrade regardless but um you know yeah at the same time for me as a pc player i think uh, that's simply why i'll be playing the games mm -hmm. yep. i guess i'll oh, go after that go ahead brother Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. But, no, no, go on, go you know, on. pretty much what Microsoft has been doing, you know, lately with the Scorpio is just they're focusing on the hardware. And really, that's not like, you know, where I feel like they need to improve on. Like Robin said, I feel like, you know, the reason why you don't see Xbox, you know, leading in terms of, you know, against PlayStation is, you know, pretty much what they have to offer in terms of software and the titles that they have. You know, Sea of Thieves looks cool, but like, even when you get games like Crackdown 3 and Sea of Thieves, um they're still lackluster in terms of like what's available and even when they do have you know software that is available like you know as robin said you know i have a pc that's capable of running them anyway you know what's the point of buying a scorpio even that will be like 500 dollars when you could just run it off your pc as well and yeah. you know i'm the the big takeaway i took from this though is that fact that you know they're letting digital foundry do this early and they're kind of getting it done you know like two months away from e3 that way when e3 comes around i'm hoping that they're going to focus on the games and i know they always yeah. say that but um, I feel like, you know, now more than ever, they need to prove themselves. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, midway through the generation, I guess you could say, since, you know, we're getting the midterm consoles now. And I don't know, I guess it's just a wait and see with Microsoft right now. If they can, like, prove they have, like, amazing titles. I mean, even if they do announce titles this E3, I doubt we'll see them come this fall anyway. Buying one, I don't think I'll be buying one this fall. No. Well, I mean, in terms of the Scorpio, I think it's going to fail or succeed based on the price. And the way it's being marketed is a premium console for premium gamers. And that's not the target audience they should be aiming for. It should be for those gamers that have made, bought a PS4 and should be considering buying like an upgrade of a console. Because the PS4 Pro is only forward, but it's not too much of a step. And what I hate this generation is how uh, developers and publishers are, are, are focusing too much on the hardware aspect of it. We don't have enough games that run at a solid 1080p 60 to be able to justify moving on to 4K. Yeah. There's just not enough. And I know it sounds like a dick move to say, but there is no point in owning an Xbox One at this point, and there isn't. Because, I mean, I know that sounds like a cop out thing to say, but they don't have, uh, software pushes game, it pushes hardware. But the hardware has got to be good enough to justify that pitch. It's like we saw with the Wii U, that failed, even though it had a great lineup of software, um, but pathetic hardware. And Xbox is kind of like great hardware, no software. So that's where Sony sort of uh, hit the nail on the head this generation in particular with the PS4, because they've got a perfect balance. Uh, what Microsoft are doing is I'm not, they're, they're focusing too much on the specs and not the games. If you look over, okay, we've got the Xbox Scorpio coming, but we haven't got any big hitters to say, okay, go out and buy this console you know what i mean the sources are saying go out and buy the scorpio for the sake of being able to run Forza in 4k which is a great game all means but you need those big hitters and if you look at the upcoming software lineup for sony you've got spider-man days gone detroit last of us 2 death strand and all these big big games xbox only i mean they had halo wars 2 which was a bit of failure in all honesty and they got crackdown coming up a new iteration of halo and gears of course is in the works but they're not the games that are going to push hardware the games that are going to push hardware is like these big new ips and obviously scalebound got cancelled this year and that would have been a game that would have pushed the scorpio sales in my opinion because it looked great 
so Microsoft really needs to tone down this thing of like, okay, we're going to push out this advertisement of having the world's most powerful console because if they price it at, say, $500, $600, for that price, you can get a PC with probably better specs or the same specs, which still runs Xbox ex- quote-unquote exclusive games. So yeah, they just need to they need to focus more on a software lineup and running those games at a solid 10 to be 60 before they move, justify moving on to. And I think I think that the the average consumer who you know mm-hmm. like that's how, that's basically how the console wars won, right? By the average yeah. consumer, and those are really not that interested. I think in a five or six hundred dollar box, they'd rather uh-huh. just get a good console for a good price. Like you can get the normal PS4 Slim or whatever for three hundred, I think at the moment, exactly. maybe even less than that. You know, like yeah. they get so many games with it, all their friends already own one. I, I just think, yeah, I mean, Xbox introducing a six hundred dollar console or something is not gonna it's not gonna yeah. often change that around in any way. It's gonna be once again cool for the Xbox fan, but as the you know, if we're talking about just the console war, I think there's simply gonna be no no difference really. No, exactly. I completely agree. And it's like this is the thing again, going back to that thing of like, does hardware really make the games better? Because it doesn't. Because if it did, PC would be like I don't, it's just there's too many there's not enough of a reason to buy xbox at this point there's not enough games if you're going to advertise a console as being the world's most powerful console you've got to back up that with a big list of games worth buying that for and a new iteration of a long-running franchise is not the way to do that it's with these big new ips and microsoft just aren't doing that so they've got to come out the gates this year at e3 and show us why we should be buying a scorpio yeah, yeah. i mean well you guys have pretty much covered everything so yeah um, yeah yeah once again it's just like in the end, I think the games is really what sells the console, right? So mm-hmm. this is where the Xbox or Microsoft is lacking because even though they have like Crackdown and Sea of Thieves coming out, the, of course, those aren't like big system sellers like mm-hmm. all the PS4 um, exclusives coming up. So yeah, um, yeah, you pretty much covered everything. So. Yeah. But I mean, where's like, where's Microsoft's uh, uh, Horizon or Microsoft's The Last exactly. of Us? So yeah. These yeah. kinds of games you know, that, that actually get you excited. Like you the know. Crackdown, I just don't have that. I'm sure no. it has its audience, of course, but it's not, it's not, it's just not similar. Mm-hmm. Halo, Gears and Forza have been done so many times already. So they, mm-hmm. of course, also have their audience. And those are the people who will, in the beginning, really be buying the Microsoft, you know, consoles always for those games. But after that, you got to try and get new audiences. You got to come up with these mm. games that get all the gamers excited, and that's yeah. just what they're really lacking at the moment. Yeah. They need, they need their own. Like I said, yeah, Horizon, The Last of Us, uh, uh, these type of games, Ex- yeah. like more the story-driven experiences. I would say because yeah. they don't really yeah, have yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, because Sony has such a well-rounded field of games. You know, they have all the types of like the big open-world games, like Horizon. Then you've got the linear story-driven games, like Uncharted. Yeah. Then you've got the superhero games, like uh, Spider-Man and Batman and things like that. But so Microsoft needs an answer to Sony's uh, output of software, and then they're just not delivering on that. And I mean, yeah, Red Dead running in 4K is going to be phenomenal. I think that will yeah. probably be the biggest system seller. But you can also play that on the PS4 and the PS4 Pro, which, at the whilst it might be might be um, a downgrade in terms of a hardware perspective, it doesn't mean the game's any better on Xbox. It just means it runs better and it looks better. That doesn't make the game itself better. And then to add to that, Sony are then going to it, it surrounds Red Dead with like exclusives like Uncharted, Spider Man, Detroit Days Gone, and all these big games. Whereas Microsoft are just going to be left in the dust just with a new console and nothing uh, to justify buying it. Yeah, they honestly just really need new IPs. They need new ideas. Mm-hmm. They can't just keep recycling the old stuff. Like yeah. so far, the only two games that have convinced me to possibly buy an Xbox have been Sunset Overdrive and Quantum Break. And even yeah. Quantum Break yeah. didn't really, you know, do that well. Oh, I really enjoyed Quantum, Quantum Break. I love it too. Yeah. yeah. So. I played Quantum yeah, Break was... and I really enjoyed that game, to be honest. Really? I mean, I, I wouldn't say it's like a 9 out of 10 game, Quantum Break, but mm-hmm. I was interested by it and it, it was I thought it was good, but it, because it didn't sell that well, I think it's really going to put Microsoft off trying these new IPs. And that's a shame because that's what, what, what you're all saying. That's what they need to do. But because of the fact that when you have a game like Quantum Break, that they advertise quite a lot as being you know, this really big story-driven experience. Because that failed, I, I, that's made me even more worried in terms of, you know, whether Microsoft are actually going to keep pushing, you know, for these new IPs yeah. and, you know, con- not yeah. constantly make stuff like, you know, Forza or, uh, Forza's or Halo's or stuff like that. So that's my worry for it. Take risk, I, guess. Respect, I mean, Gears 4 was fantastic, but it's just if they keep reiterating that, it's going to get stale. Um, if you've played any of the recent Halo games, Halo's been going downhill to shit yeah. since Bungie left. Ever since Halo 4 and 5 were just mediocre games. And if you look at the sales of Halo, it's been going down and down every year. Halo 3 sold 
of roughly 10 to 12 million copies, whereas Halo 5 sold less than 3 or 2 million copies, which is a joke compared to its previous game. So Xbox doesn't really have that line, that lead exclusive that every everyone can associate an Xbox with, whereas PlayStation has numerous ones. And I think their newest icon is going to be Horizon. I think this is going to be Sony's next big thing. Uh, and even if it isn't, they've got a whole lineup of uh, of games to to potentially be that um, icon for the PlayStation. Yeah. Whereas it's Microsoft crazy. Is it's even crazy, like to realize that now pretty much the the most sold PS4 exclusive Uncharted 4, which sold uh-huh. like nine million at the moment, yeah. that they're just deciding to pretty much end the franchise and just continue with new games. If you really think about it, because Microsoft would never do that. That they had yeah. Halo they selling would 12 million. Cling to it, yeah. This yeah, is why, see, that, they that's why they're continuing these franchises because they've got nothing to back it up with. You know, they're continuing Halo and Gears and Forza because they don't have that that Horizon or that Days Gone or Detroit or whatever the next big thing is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I guess in terms of this E3, do you guys see them like announcing a new IP like that, or do you think they're gonna stick to their old ways? I mean, I, I think guess at least one or two. But yeah. 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 At the same yeah. time, I mean, uh, three for three is gonna just announce a new Halo again, probably for the Scorpio. Right. So uh, mm-hmm. because it's it's time that Halo Six is gonna get announced. So I think that's happening this year. Um, mm-hmm. I just hope that yeah they did. But like, which studios are gonna do it? They don't have that many studios either, so yeah, exactly. they would have to exactly. once again right. have these third party, you know. Honestly. Yeah, I mean, they'd have to settle down again with the third-party deals and everything like that, get a different studio to make the games for them, which means that they're probably, you know, they'll have trouble really continuing it probably in the future again. It's, it's just, they, I, I don't even know. They just need to start investing into, into first-party studios, I would say. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, really yeah. the most important thing at the moment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, so, yeah, okay. So I think we can move on to some of the releases of the week. So we have... Uh, Persona and fi- Persona Five and John to Death. Now these are oh, and also Parappa the rapper. The, that's yeah. the remaster, right? Yeah. Don't forget that one. Come on. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, three hour fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, these are games like I haven't played any of these games, so um, if you guys have any thoughts on them, you know. Hey, I guess Robin cool. gets Persona, Persona Four Parappa. Golden on the Vita was amazing, so I'm really excited to just, uh, play Persona Five. And Persona Five started at a 94 on Metacritic, which is fucking huge. Yeah. Um, and it looks like a really good game, and I love the Persona franchise, so I can't wait to play that. Um, and Drawn to Death came out this week, didn't it, on PS, PS Plus? Plus right? yeah. David Jaffe makes great games. I mean, people forget he was associated with God of War 1 and 2 and the Twisted Metal franchise. So I'm excited to play Drawn to Death because it looks like a really unique concept. I saw yeah. that iGen just gave it a 4 out of 10, apparently, right? in the review. But... Wow. Really? Well, I sounded so butthurt. Like, he just got wrecked in multiplayer, and he's yeah. so salty about it. Who was the uh, reviewer? They, uh, I'm I didn't not even sure. Know, but... He wasn't like one of the big guys of IGN. Yeah. And, and he called it, I think, uh, one of the flaws was, I think, that it was mean spirited. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. What a casual. <laughs> yeah, <I don't> know. <laughs> it's, like, it's like the too much water thing in Pokemon. Too much and a lot of issues yeah, were like launch well, issues, well, I guess, that he mentioned. Well, I mean, not, not, to, not to say that it is a great game or something. I barely played yeah. it, but, uh, yeah. but maybe it is pretty bad. Uh, but yeah, I, I thought from what I played of the first two matches or something that I played that it was pretty all right, but yeah it's like definitely like nothing too special but yeah i've had fun with it quite a bit it just like a cool I, concept really that nervous. you play for a few hours and then just like drop it off cool experience all right i've done yeah. that it definitely feels like a full game though like it mm. has a rank system where you're climbing this tower um it has like some microtransactions for like the loot boxes but they have improved since launch because like they had some like wrong numbers they said i'm not sure how much mm. of that is bs or so but you know for weapons, you won't have an issue. Like I've already, like I already can unlock like ten new weapons right now if I wanted to. Yeah, I wouldn't like, be surprised though in terms of sales if that game bombed like fuck because that has had such a fucked up development cycle. That game was meant to come out so many times, it got delayed and then cancelled numerous times, and then it was originally like fully planned for 2016 in a good time period where there was no big AAA surrounding it, and now they've just sort of shit it out in between like Horizon and. Did they ever put a date to it? Yeah, no, well, no, the, it was predicted for end of 2016. That's what David Jaffe said. And then he yeah. fucking delayed it again and again and again. And now it's coming out on, on possibly the worst year he could have released it. So, I mean, it's starting to just shit it out at the wrong time. We're, well, there is some time they could have done in the summer, but I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I guess Persona is definitely a different crowd than, you know. Trump yeah, that's a very niche getting... market, though. Same as Nero yeah. Automata. Very niche market. Yeah. Like, say, like, if they released it, like, around Zelda and Horizon, that would have got crushed because, like, you know, majority oh, yeah. of people were playing it. That would have got shit all over. Jesus. Yeah. But, yeah. I guess, Robin, if you want to talk about Parappa the Rapper. Oh, well, I, I, I probably just made it sound better than it is. But, uh, no, uh, <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's cool. I mean, it's only, like, 10 bucks or, t- or 12, I think, if you had PS Plus and otherwise 15. 
yeah. but it's it's just you know it's a really old school rhythm game so yeah. if you buy your own stuff it's similar in a way but is it is it supposedly like impossible or something like, i've heard people like complaining about the like the difficulty in that game uh i didn't find it that bad actually it's just um let's see well there is a problem with with the whole syncing thing basically like if you see a, a button prompt on the screen or whatever and you tap it at that time it's usually not correct you've really got to like listen to the music so if you see that you have to press uh, or tap x or whatever like don't do it when whenever it's on the screen but do it whenever you hear the music really like get to that certain beat you know um uh, so yeah, that, but I got the platinum trophy for it literally uh, within four hours of playing it. So it's really not that bad. But yeah, I mean, you have to maybe be a, a bit good at rhythm games, and I played quite some rhythm games before. So maybe that's yeah, why I it was. With the demo, it was pretty cool. But I mean, yeah. I'm not sure if I'd pay twelve bucks to play like an hour long game. But it's it only like... six songs. So if you you know played the demo, you've played one of them, and it's like yeah, five <laughs> more, and that's pretty much it. You really Damn. can beat it all in like fifteen minutes. That's it. Mm. Yeah, I mean, those PS2 and PS4 games, like, they tend to go. Well, I guess it's a remaster, not a PS2 on PS4, but. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, it's a remake of PS1 game. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, speaking yeah. of PS2 and PS4, I guess we could talk about Jack that got. Oh yes, yeah, so I'm so PS4. happy this is coming to PS4, uh, right? But that's now the, literally every yeah. single Naughty Dog game could be played on a PS4 starting this fall, right? Yeah, every single yeah. one they've ever released. Sure, sure, that's sure. fucking insane. Well, you mean with Crash Bandicoot remastered or? Uh... Yeah, yeah I, mean, I guess Jack, all the Uncharted, yeah. The Last of Us, Uncharted yeah, 4, yeah. The Last of Us Part 2. I mean, fucking hell. Wait, didn't they make a Crash Racing that? Didn't not Jack Oh yeah, that's not with it. Oh yeah, that's not with it. Damn, the one game you cannot play on a PS4. Oh, Craft Team Racing, yeah. 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 It's Shame. interesting to see all the remasters lately are all platformers, if you noticed that. Like, all, a lot yeah. of them, anyway. Yeah, That's what I was talking about when I made that video about how Sly could, like, easily feel like it. That's why I was so happy about Jack. Because yeah. I feel like the last platformer that we really got that was great besides, you know, Ukulele coming out was, like, oh, per prove me if I'm wrong, but, like, just, I think Ratchet and Clank, I'm not sure if any more platformers came out, maybe, like, some indies. Mm. But, like, as far as getting, like, one that's, you know, I guess that got its spotlight. I don't know. I definitely think we need more platforms. Like, it's cool to no, see them yeah. come back as remasters, but I, I really want more actual new games to be made yeah. uh, in the platforming genre. Right. But there's no way in hell Jack 4 is getting made. So there's no fucking way. No, that would be such uh, well, a step back for Naughty, not, Naughty Dog. I, Dog no, not by Naughty Dog, but no. maybe a different studio. That's, you know, yeah. that's always possible. Yeah, definitely uh, from that interview with Game Informer, it seemed like they were focusing on new ideas they had. Uh, Naughty Dog is never going to go back yeah, to this series like that. Oh, yeah. If you if you make Uncharted in the last version, you're not going to go back to a platformer like that. With, no, it's such yeah. a step backwards. It'd be, yeah. it'd be so weird. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Not happening. I mean, I'm already excited to see like what they can do after The Last of Us, right? So, yeah. yeah. But I mean, I mean, I'm more interested about Crash to be honest, because I mean, the new Crash. If they did, this is obviously an indication as Crash, a new Crash could be in the works. Yeah. But it won't be by Naughty Dog. And if anyone played the PS2 Crash games, they were shit. Like proper yeah, shit. Some of them were yeah, like all right, but for the way. majority, they were bad, bad games. So if Activision are making another crash, unless they like sort of utilize the same mechanics as the original trilogy, it'd be just a drastic failure. So well, that's I don't thing. know. It'll be interesting to see how well it sells. I think the people who made or who are making the remaster now, you know, they're really like, uh, yeah, they're pretty much making the game the way it was on the PS One. Um, but it's looking really good. Like it, it, it looks like a modern platformer at the moment, and I think that's what's awesome about it. And I hope that if, yeah, I mean, I assume that Crash is going to sell pretty well, hopefully, and then they're going to make a new one, and they just have to look at what those old games really did well. And I think that they can pull it off still, although the PS2 games were pretty terrible. But you know, I, I think, think they, they can, can do it. it. It's only like forty dollars too, so it's not like it's going to be a full title with like all. I'm the... surprised because it's Activision. I can't believe it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. No, with the <laughs> DLC, what the hell? <laughs> the crash DLC for yeah. remasters. Le le levels hidden away by DLC, pay extra money for the, the levels. fruit, packs of fruit for <laughs> one for three hundred, one for three, five dollars. Oh, that wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> yeah, I just think okay. it's like it's it really sucks that 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 platformers don't get that much attention anymore. I mean, yeah. uh, uh, personally, one of my favorite games is Rayman Legends, and that like yeah, I played yeah. that game and and I just loved it, but it never got a sequel because I don't think it sold really well, and it's just crazy to me because it's literally one of the best games i've played in the last five years yeah. uh but yeah it's not looking to get a sequel i think so it's just it's sad to me like i i, I hope people buy more into platformers because they're always fun you know yeah, they, yeah. They, that they actually buy those games and then uh, more can be made let's just yeah. let's just hope that you know crash and jack and all these games are just gonna do well how messed up would that be like everybody's crying for crash and doesn't sell well at all <laughs> no it will sell well it, it, i know it will sell well but just imagine if that happened that yeah 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 it's interesting though so also right. interesting about ukulele as well that came out recently and that's bombed critically or well, it's coming out at like it was yeah, a 64 yeah. for a certain amount of time now it's at like a 70 something yeah especially yeah, if I it's a spiritual successor for 
Fun ukulele game. doesn't really look like a platformer that like i don't know like isn't there like a flying mechanic or something like that i'm not sure but like it's a spiritual successor to banjo kazooie which was yeah, an n64 yeah. game but yeah i hope there's more platformers around really do. yeah same here mm-hmm. yeah. okay so um yeah okay so the next thing we can talk about is that uh uncharted the lost legacy legacy um game length so i have the article here i'm just quickly gonna read out what it says so um arnie meyer who's the community community strategist at naughty dog of course he was in an interview with iv times and what he says here is quote years ago when we were asked if we were ever doing a single player expansion for uncharted we always said well we don't have the self-discipline to do that if we tried to do that we'd create a full game meyer told us um quote there's no way we could sort of constrict ourselves constrict and restrain ourselves and that's exactly what what was happening here when we were doing story pitches we were coming up with a game that would that would be over 10 hours long and sorry and so we suddenly realized everything we said was true and we couldn't keep it short so yeah now a lot of news articles are basically saying it's like oh they teased that uncharted the lost legacy is going to be well over 10 hours which i don't really believe because you know naughty dog's only been working on this um you know story expansion for like Mm not even two years it's like you know just like a year and a half so yeah i wouldn't even trust developers to be i wouldn't even trust like most you know people in the game industry you know in terms of the news outlets because i mean you saw what happened with you know the spider-man game for ps4 when you know all of a sudden you know one of the head people at marvel was like oh it's releasing 2017 then everybody jumps on the bandwagon of that and then insomniac come out and straight up say we haven't given a release date for it so yeah, I'm but that's the thing. It's like that, yeah. that live stream was like from four months ago. So I know. So yeah, so it's kind of ridiculous how they just like brought it up now, and then all these like news outlets were making a yeah. big deal out of it. So uh, they're just desperate for a story. Yeah. yeah, but you you'll also see these people from you know come, like Arnie Meyer from Naughty Dog. I I still remember now because I've talked about all this stuff. Uh, basically before Uncharted Four came out, I remember him saying now now that I think about it uh, that he thought that the opening of Uncharted Four was like more emotional than the last was. I think looking back at it now, it's it, it never really was, you know. So <laughs> no, it wasn't, yeah, might, it wasn't even close. He might like oversell things or uh, uh, you know because he is the community strategist after all. I mean, he is trying to to probably uh, promote the product at the same time. So I I don't think it's gonna be ten hours. It's gonna be like you know, yeah, five or six. Five or six. Yeah. I mean, maybe if you didn't like know that Sam was gonna be still alive, that it could have been emotionally attached for like in the trailers and everything. I don't know. Yeah. yeah like I mean, that intro like, was like, good, but like not for emotional reasons. But yeah. No, but like, there's yeah. no way Lost Legacy is gonna be ten hours. There's no way that'll be like an exa- massive exaggeration. But you could probably like get stretched ten hours out of it if you play at like a slow pace. Mm. That game will be like Robin said, like five to six hours. It could be a hundred um, if you just stand still. Yeah. Oh well. Yeah. <laughs> well, for ten hours, they would have charged full price because that's the length of a full price linear or a full length linear game. Yeah. I mean, if you're really gonna try and look in every corner to find treasures and stuff, <laughs> I'm sure it can take you ten hours, just like it can take some people thirty hours to complete on Child Four. But for the most people, oh, yeah, five or six hours seems like that's what it's yeah. gonna be, and I think that's already like enough to be very happy about because. Yeah. Uh, Five or six yeah. hours seems awesome to me for a game that was only in development for one, one yeah, one or one and a half years. So, yeah, it would have been one year if Uncharted 4 came out in May. You would have entered development for Lost Legacy in about summer, maybe early fall, and then get it out 12 month cycle. Yeah. Yeah, I do think that like maybe they started working on the story a little before that because you'd imagine that the people writing the story would be done already by like 2015 or something, you know. So, so they might have already been in, in pre production for the game, um, yeah, before Uncharted 4 even came out, but. Uh, as far as real development, yeah, it, it should have started somewhere in May. So, yep, really excited to see. I don't really want to see more of that game, to be honest. I just want to be able to play it. So, yeah, yeah exactly. They, it. they shouldn't show off anything in E3 because that's just like going way too far. They no, still get one trailer. Yeah, they are going to show off. It's going to be like a short trailer. It's going to be a short trailer. Like one news day. And that's yeah, it. Sony's not going to be sitting on like a five to six hour Naughty Dog adventure and just be like, nah, we'll skip that on E3s. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's that. It's you're going to yeah. see it. It's going to be like one minute trailer and then the release date. So, yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, that's pretty much the news of the week. I mean, yeah, as I said, it was pretty like lackluster in terms of actual interesting news topics. Um, so yeah, we added a few like personal topics that we can talk about. So what we have here is one personal game we'd like to see announced. So this can be like a sequel or I don't know, like a new game that you would like to see from a particular studio or something like that. And I don't know, like if you want to see it at E3 or something like that. So, I mean, I can start with this one. Um, so a personal game I would like to see announced is actually a sequel to Alan Wake. So 
Um, Alan Wake, for those who don't know, is a um, game developed by Remedy Studio, Remedy Entertainment, also created Quantum Break, of course. Mm-hmm. And I played Alan Wake, I think it was last summer, on my PC, where I just needed a cool story game, and I heard that um, Alan Wake was pretty cool, so I went on my PC, bought it on Steam, and tried it out. I beat it within, like I think it was 13 hours or 14 hours like that. Um, and yeah, I found it really interesting. The story was good. Although the ending was is like a mind fuck, like you don't even know what happened at the end. Like I had to research like on like twenty different forums to actually understand what happened. Yeah. Um. So yeah, Alan Wake is a game that I really like, and it's you know story driven that I really enjoyed. So yeah, if I wanted to see a sequel to Alan Wake, yeah, that would be awesome. But I don't Didn't think they like indicate that they would be making it at some point, or that they really yeah. One one there like some Easter eggs in it in Quantum Break. I swear there was. I think there were. I think there were. But I don't know yeah. if they're going to be making another one, though. Yeah. Because I remember reading one thing that, one article that said they wouldn't pr- bring it back or anything. I'm not too sure. But I also know that they trademarked the name again. But I don't know. I don't mm-hmm. know. I still need to play the original, but I think I will at some point still. It was, it was, that, that's like one of those games that, yeah, I mean, I, I like Remedy is pretty much, they're not owned by Microsoft, I think, right? They're like... Uh, no, they're a second party studio. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But they make the type of games that I would, although I still haven't played them, but that I would really want to play because, yeah, they're story driven and they're linear, and you know, that's just. I think we need more of those kind of games. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, it has a, it has a really cool soundtrack though. Yeah. Yeah, it does. I I really like the soundtrack. Like it yeah. really makes you like, it makes makes you feel like you're really there. If you get what I mean, like you're really mm-hmm. immersive. Yeah, it's really immersive. How yeah, scary is that game? I at the like I remember I played it one time at night in the basement by myself. Great like, yeah. <laughs> I kind of scared. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. It's it's not like horror scary, but like there's definitely like some thriller. You know, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say thriller. Maybe like Bound Shock, where it's not like necessarily. Or a Drake's Fortune uh, bunkers type of. Uh... Oh, that, that was, was scary as shit. <laughs> I was scared. Yeah, I played that when I was like seven years old. <laughs> yeah, as a kid, I was scared shitless, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I so, guess Robin, you can go next. Oh, uh, uh, for me, uh, let's see. I mean, like the funny thing is, a lot of the games I really wanted uh, actually like came out or have been announced by now. You know, like uh, I mean, of course, I always wanted Uncharted Four to come out, and but that that came out now. Uh, uh, Red Dead Redemption Two is coming out finally, so that's like I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, I wanted a new Mirror's Edge, and even though it was disappointing, it. Uh, it, uh, it did come out, we did ultimately get it, but yeah, for me pretty much there's one game left and that's Skate 4. I just really, I like the Skate franchise a lot, super fun games. Uh, Skate 2 to me particularly, I just had so much fun with playing both offline, uh, you know, just skating around in these parks the whole time, or, or online where you had a lot of people using headsets and just having a good time together, I really liked that about it. The, the community was actually really awesome in that game, compared to all the shit talking that goes on in Call of Duty nowadays, so... I, uh, yeah, I really, I really loved Skate 2, and then, you know, they went to, like, Skate 3, and I think it didn't really sell too well because EA started milking the franchise, uh, uh, because Skate 3 literally came out a year after, so, and, and that thing, right, or, huh? didn't PewDiePie, like, have, well, was that Skate 2 or Skate, no, that was Skate 3, right? Yeah, that was Skate 3, yeah. yeah. The, the, well, the thing was is that the game didn't really sell that well because it came out so quickly, um, and I also didn't really like it. As much, I mean, I still liked it because it's skate, but but it just was focused a little more on the crazy stuff, I would say, about like you know just trying to uh, uh, bail as badly as you could, you know, break as many bones and stuff. Whereas I liked skate for skating, obviously. So uh, yeah, but but actually, the funny thing about it is that pretty much two years after it came out or something, I think uh, PewDiePie started playing it on his channel, and all of a sudden you saw a lot of other Let's Players play it, and so many you know kids started buying the game but also for the, for the wrong reasons though if i think about it you know they, they really bought it for yeah doing all that crazy shit in the game basically um, maybe for saying this but like that's my main memory of playing that game is like yeah. three whole I, I get it i mean i get it for, yeah. uh, if, you, if you're a kid and stuff that that must you know seem really cool of course to do it. well it wasn't that it's was just like that's what i saw on youtube and that's what like i think i had skate three yeah i think i yeah, I, I own Skate 3, and that's like I, I remember playing, but like, yeah, definitely skating would have been more probably fun. <laughs> yeah, and Skate 3 was really, as I said, seemed more made for that. So, you know, you really should have like looked into Skate 2 and see the way it was back then. I mean, I just I just had a great time. Yeah, literally just skateboarding around. Um, 
But but yeah, we'll have to wait and see if Skate 4 is ever going to be announced. I honestly doubt it because EA nowadays is only making sports games and Star Wars games. And it doesn't really seem... They literally have like seven studios working on Star Wars games. It's just crazy to me. <laughs> yeah, it's just, um, okay, it's that guy from EA was a dick on Twitter. Like, like fucking hinting at Escape 4. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. We don't know what that was. Like, it... Asshole. <laughs> Unless it was a social experiment to see if uh, if people were hyped, but yeah, I, I can only hope that because I do want it to eventually come out. I, d I don't even care if they're still going to focus on the crazy stuff as long as I can still, you know, skateboard, which I think in a game called Skate I will be able to do. I'll be glad to uh, play one on PS4 because I can't play it right now anymore. So. so did the guy that hinted at it? Did he ever like talk about like what he meant by that? Like, did he ever? No, he like, never said anything. He literally tweeted that. that the tweet is even still up. He never got any shit from EA for it. So it's weird. There has to be something to that. You don't just own like you don't have a job at EA and just tweet that out and have like I don't know. Yeah, I know. Said, really there is that. something, but I don't know what. Yeah. Yeah. At the very least, he's probably trying to gain attention to like see how much of a demand there is for Skate yeah. Four. Yeah. yeah, there seems to be a core community like Robin, a part of that. There seems to be a core community surrounding the game that would like it. It's just a case of like, is the core community big enough? You know, like we saw with Mirror's Edge, there was a core community mm -hmm. who wanted that game, but then it tanked in sales. So, Man, Mirror's Edge three is not really happening. Did, yeah. If it is, then I'd be very, very surprised. To be fair, that's EA's own fault with what they did with Mirror's Edge because it just right. it was it was lesser than the first game, which is crazy. It was still fun for me, but it was not as good, and they turned into a Ubisoft open world game pretty much. So I remember buying Catalyst like day one for sixty dollars. So like, I was so excited for that game, and like yeah. I enjoyed the game like for like all the missions, but like after the open world, it got really bland. But like I remember yeah. like a week later, it was already like forty dollars or yeah. something like that. It's crazy, but yeah, they screwed up themselves. Like they can't blame like the community for not buying that game. I guess like regular. I mean, I get, I know the like diehard Mirror's Edge fans. I've been wanting a sequel. Probably bought it at least. But like if they're trying to get it, you know, obviously their business. They want to get other people into it. They kind of screwed up on that with like making it, I guess, interesting. Yeah, the first game had a really like mysterious vibe to it, and it was it was just a game that I replayed dozens of times and did all the time trials in. And then the second game, yeah, the second game felt a lot more bland or generic. Um, and it's an open world game so with with me it's always like i beat it once do all the missions and then i never return to it really so it's just a one-time thing yeah. yeah i mean i'll go next i think in terms of a game i'd love to see announced it's as we were speaking about before with the resurgence of platforming games i'd love a a full remaster of the spyro trilogy from the ps1 that was my favorite i mean the, the ps1 has such a road you could go right down a fucking rabbit hole with that fucking console because there's so many it's such a robust library of games but spyro stood out to me because of, of course the first spyro is my first ever video game and um, so that really resonated me with me because of that but it's not just nostalgia i had so much fucking fun with that game all those games um throughout childhood and growing up the really good platforming games and we saw the, the crash bandicoot came back uh from fan demand and i think there's a big i mean there's the cure community like myself who would love a spyro trilogy remaster but then with this idea that all these old pla old school platformers like ukulele parappa oh not parappa um jack and daxter crash bandicoot's all these platforming games that belong to a lot of people's childhoods they're all coming back it's not outside the realm of possibility that spyro could make a return who in my opinion is the best platforming series um, and the, the rights to the games still lie with activision i mean i know they, they raped spyro in skyland it's like <laughs> jesus christ but yeah i still think it's in the realm of possibility and i really really would love a return to that universe because it's very special very special games to me but do you know if spyro is like uh special to the to the kids that like skylanders is is, is uh spyro yeah really no that's figure? um the, to the spyro community spyro died after the end of the ps2 legend of spyro mm. trilogy which were like story driven games and then the activision sort of saw the success of spyro and then sort of thought okay we'll make a game around it toys to life more money more money more money um, and I hate the way the younger kids are going to see Spyro as the Skylanders who looks like a, a retarded pug. Skylanders is so well. I mean, honestly, kids nowadays are playing Call of Duty. It's... Yeah, it's oh, just it's people stuff. are going to look at Spyro and think, oh, Skylanders, but that's not what Spyro is. Spyro had brilliant games before Skylanders. But then, um, yeah, I guess the kids are not going to be the vocal ones commenting on YouTube, maybe. No, <laughs> but, yeah, I can see your point. That kind of suck, but. Nah, it's shit. But yeah, I'd love a return to that universe. Really love those games. Yeah. Yeah, looking at like the games that I really want to see announced personally, like I've already gotten sequels onto like some of my favorite games of all time, like Batman, Arkham Asylum got many sequels that I really liked. Same thing with Uncharted, obviously with Uncharted 4, Mirror's Edge. 
but like the still like the same one I want another game for is definitely Bioshock. Like after Infinite, I really want to see what two K can Levine? do. Yeah, uh, without Ken Levine. Well, two K Marin that made Bioshock two after. What isn't that like? Yeah, definitely. Like to favorite. many, is like one of like the best. Like a lot of people say, it's like one of their favorite Bioshocks. I know it wasn't really much of a thrill. That's the one thing I'm worried about Bioshock four, is that it's not much of a thriller. Like yeah. in Bioshock two, it's more like a shooter, not what one was. But well, I think that's why that's where Infinite was in the direction the series was going with Infinite. Yeah. It became more of a shooter rather than this really atmospheric story yeah. centric. But at this point, it's kind of like a no-brainer that they're making another Bioshock because I think they even mentioned yeah. it that Two K Marin's making one. They had the collection that recently came out with all yeah. the DLC. It's Definitely. still possible to come out, and I think they're going to see the, the the. There's no way that IP is dead. I think that there's a new game in the works. I just hope there isn't because without Ken Levine, the mastermind yeah. behind the original trilogy, he's working on an RPG now, right? Like with Ghost Stories. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah well just hoping that they don't screw up with bioshock because honestly that's like a series that i feel like doesn't really have any bad games to it i, I mean you could look at two as like you know kind of like the redheaded stepchild of the yeah you know, two, two to me is at least the worst the worst yeah. of the trilogy yeah. yeah but it's not you know a bad game by any means no. i guess no it's a fucking great game i hate the way it gets shit on because it's the worst bioshock game that doesn't mean it's a bad game it's a fucking great game yeah it's kind of like the same thing with like uncharted 3 like technically it's like you know it's the worst uncharted but like it's not a bad game by any means i mean yeah. story-wise it ha- definitely has its plot holes but like you know going back to bioshock it's definitely like man i just really want to get another venture and just like the atmosphere in those games are incredible and yeah 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 man just one another bioshock mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I don't know what I'd say for mine because no I would FIFA? say so. No, 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 FIFA not FIFA. <laughs> <laughs> no, because we all. I'm, I'm pretty sure they confirmed that as well, so you can't can't really say that. But yeah. I would have said Simpsons Hit and Run a sequel to that, but considering how shocking The Simpsons is now, the yeah, you that game would probably be awful. The... Yeah, I'd probably prefer a remaster of it. Yeah. But if I had to go with the game that I would want the most, I would probably have to say. And uh, this is probably going to be like, quite a shocking one. I probably want a sequel to Batman Arkham Origins made by really? Warner Bros. Montreal. Really? Yeah. And I know that's a crazy one, but that's mainly because of the fact that I think I've made my opinion on this very clear. I felt Arkham Knight was probably one of the most disappointing video games I've ever played. It's not a bad game, yeah. but I was just so disappointed with that game in comparison to all the others. Yeah. Like, For me, it's easily my least favorite. I think Origins gets shitted on way too much because i honestly i think i had more enjoyment with that game than city i mean i'll still say city is the overall better game but i just preferred origins overall and i really would want to see a sequel to origins i mean there was that like arkham insurgency leak i think it was yeah, like a or, month did back. do a sequel to origins though didn't he with the black gate on the vita that was like the it was but that's I, a real sequel yeah to it, 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 really yeah, consoles. yeah but it wasn't it wasn't really like a full-fledged like sequel to be honest no. like I know it did like come to console consoles. Sequel. Yeah. yeah, it came to console, yeah. and I did actually buy it, but uh, it, it was okay, but it, w- it didn't really feel like a full-fledged-out sequel, and I really would want to see that with Origins, especially because I really would like to see all the gaps in between, you know, that game and Asylum, you know, to see what happened in between then. It'd just like be really end, cool. Yeah, yeah mm. I mean, I know we, it probably won't happen. I mean, I, I mean, I bet there will be another Batman game by Warner Brothers. We all know this, but whether it would be a arkham origin sequel i'm still unsure about but that probably be the game that i would want to see you know be announced i no. I, I i hope it does happen but i really don't think it will no i don't think it's sold that well especially when compared with like arkham city and arkham knight and it's definitely positive. origins was a ge- origins was a great game and troy baker was a fucking brilliant joker he was really he was rivaled uh, mark hamill he was he was really good in that game and there was a yeah. lot of good boss battles, unique boss battles. Oh, the band boss yeah. battle. They yeah, were Origins. definitely better than Arkham Knight's boss battles because holy oh, fuck yeah. were they awful. Holy shit, they were bad. Yeah, they were bad. Very bad. Yeah. yeah. So anticlimactic, I mean, that one with the Arkham Knights. It was just... Oh, uh, yeah. Fucking Philly. Talking about like Batman Arkham series, like also what Rock said he's doing next, I think they said they're going to be working on their dream game. That'll be really cool to see what they do. Probably definitely yeah. superhero related, maybe. I think there was rumors that they were making a Suicide Squad game, but then they canceled that, but... Oh, that would have been pretty cool. Yeah, yeah I, I think it was going to be like co-op, cool. but yeah. I just want to see what they do now, because that would be pretty cool too. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah, all right. So, um, okay, so we have one more thing to talk about, and this is predicting the upcoming PlayStation exclusive release date. So, of course, we know um, last E3, we had a lot of uh, PlayStation exclusives being announced. And yeah, even though they were announced, obviously a lot of them, we still don't know when they're going to be released. So yeah, we figured um, 
why not try and predict when all these games are going to come out? So, Blue, I know you actually prepared your list already. So yeah, instead of it. just um, instead of just telling us what release dates you have, how about you, you know, give us the games one by one, and then we'll predict them all as a group, I guess. Yeah, okay, okay. sure. I think I've got them wrote sure. down here. Um, first game I'm going to talk about is Days Gone. Um, Days Gone, I'm predicting, is going to come out at the end of this year. I think that's going to be alongside Gran Turismo as Sony's like the big exclusives. And they don't necessarily need one. If history is anything to go by, they don't need a big exclusive at the end of the year to push consoles because they're doing a great job already. But I just think that game's been in development for a really long time now. Um, Sony Bend Has haven't done, done anything haven't since then. The- didn't Sony Ben like they had to cancel like a lot of new projects? Yeah, because I, I know they, yeah. they were planning on doing an, a, a sequel to Uncharted Golden Abyss before that that got scrapped because they had like, yeah, like yeah. they built the whole engine for it and then they scrapped that. I I know. Yeah, they've had a yeah. few failed ideas, but and I mean they were also they working on it like a new Infamous game too. I know that got scrapped too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it did. But right. they haven't really full on developed anything since like Golden Abyss releasing in Japan in 2011. Um, so yeah, I mean that game's probably been in development what five plus years now. I'm gonna say something around that. Uh, that that's pl- that's plenty of time. Really, you think five, five years? I, yeah, I yeah, five. no, yeah. There's no, no. They've had some cancelled ideas. I think they were just brainstorming. Shit. I don't think they actually like went full on in development into any of those. But they built a whole engine for the. Didn't they build a new engine for the yeah. sequel? Or no? I don't know. No, no, I don't think right so. Right now they're using the Unreal Engine for. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, okay. and that's interesting because that's not a that's not a. Pre- what's the word proprietary engine i think is the right mm-hmm. word uh, so they've got a lot of uh, freedom to do what they want um don't have many restrictions but yeah i think that's going to be the end of end of the year because sony what sony's got to do is they've got to pick their release dates for these exclusives really carefully uh given the fact that red dead's coming out but i think yes, red dead's going to release end of fall i think days gone should come mm-hmm. out somewhere november december do, do you all really think red dead is coming out at the end of this year because i'm wondering about that I, I don't know i mean it's possible but but i really think it's like 50 thing 50. is like for me like i feel like rocks um, rocks like well, rock city what am I, rockstar you know they're in a position where like you know they're really pro- like critically acclaimed so i feel like they could do like kind of like a bomb drop where they don't really need like that much of you know marketing for like years and years and years Huh. I feel like they could definitely. Like, if this is if the game's ready. Are your video, Robin, about how you're talking about? Like, you know, we'd hear from the game by now. I mean, the only way this game is coming this year is if they're going to be doing that six month marketing cycle that Fallout 4 did. Eddie. Yeah, they need to come up with a trailer, like, literally now within the next one or two months. I think that, yeah. I mean, if. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. I, I feel like they could definitely do that, but I guess just based on history, I'll just go with it's probably not going to make this year. I will say about Days Gone though, like I just don't think that's the type of game you want to release in the fall because yeah. the fall no way they're gonna be... do that because like if you see in the past like you know Sony doesn't release their exclusives in the fall and this fall is looking to be even more jam packed. So you know yeah. when you see games like Call of Duty going back to World War Two, a new Destiny. Battlefront game, a bunch of yeah Destiny Two, you have all those marketing rights. There's no reason to have like you know Days Gone put in the mix to possibly flop, especially after this you know the studio has been you know working on it for six years. The last thing you want is like no return on that. Mm-hmm. So honestly, I feel like, you know, what is a couple months going to hurt, honestly, for that game? They could just go, you know, polish it up, make it even better. I mean, that's if, like, this game's even ready to come out soon. But uh, to me, there basically, they're basically are, like, three exclusives that are coming up or that could be coming up in the fall for Sony if they do decide to release one. That's Days Gone. It's God of War, possibly. Uh, and, and Detroit. Yeah, Detroit. So, like, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's going to be a jam-packed fall. I don't know which one they're going to send out in the fall to pretty much die amongst all the other ones because it's just those other ones are going to sell much better, I'm pretty sure. Um, Do they need it, though? Do they need to send off an exclusive? Huh? I don't think they need to, really. I mean, no, if there is going to be one. Yeah, yeah maybe, maybe they, they just decide, decide to completely hold off from the fall and, the fall and, and let the third party do the fall, fall and then they, they just spread out, out all these games that they have in the first six months of 2018. It's possible. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they also have Lost Legacy, all... though. That's like a five, six hour Naughty Dog game. So. Yeah, it's interesting yeah. what you say about the, the fall being jump up because, yeah, it is. But I think, I mean, if you look at these games individually, Destiny 2 is coming out September, Card yeah, release somewhere early November. Red Dead, to me, I think is going to come out somewhere in the fall. A new Assassin's Creed as well, by the way. Oh, new yeah. Assassin's Creed, yeah. that oh, yeah. Yeah. October, November time around there. Xbox um, also get the marketing rights. Well, if you look at 2018, I, th- I mean, we'll get onto this in a minute, but I think there's more games, big games that are coming out in 2018. And then you take into consideration that we've got E3 and Gamescom and all these PSX and all these big yeah. conferences this year that are going to announce more and more and more games yeah, yeah. for next year. Next year is looking even more jam-packed in my It's crazy, honestly. The amount of games is insane. 
But the right. thing with Days Gone is they don't want they don't want this to be a game that they're just gonna leave on the side of the road to die. Not at this minute. I don't predict any games other than maybe Gran Turismo to come out in that December period. And I think that's a good window to get Days Gone out because if they don't, then they're gonna be competing unless they release Spider Man at the end of 2017, which no, I doubt it. That, that's, no, that's, I doubt that. Nah, that's probably not gonna happen. But uh, yeah, I think December is the perfect month for Days Gone to come out. But we'll... Oh, yeah, maybe December. Maybe December. I, I can agree with that, yeah. Mm. I, I, I mean, if we're looking at... Dece- I don't know. I feel like Detroit would definitely be a game that would be sent out at the end this See, year. that's the one. Yeah. I mean, we'll get on to this in a minute. That's the yeah. one I'm not... Th- I have no hope that that's coming out this year. No fucking really? way. Yeah, no. same same with me. I don't think that's coming out this year. Well, like, what we saw last well, year at E3, it looked definitely like... I don't know. I feel like we've seen a lot from that. Well, well not really a lot, but like... Two, two trailers, that's it. But yeah, I know. It's not about you know, I mean, if you look, I mean, up... they've been working on it for a while because didn't they like yeah. they had that yeah, tech demo on the PS3? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and and Justin, didn't you say that they finished like filming? Yeah, know, yeah, filming they fin- the... they finished the mocap. I don't even remember when it was, but honestly, it wasn't even that long ago. Mm. Yeah. yeah, wait, was it? I, wait, it was like two months ago. It was two months ago around. It was yeah. like in February, I think. With that game, I think Quantic Dream are going to really take the time with it. and Because if you look at Beyond Two Souls, to a lot of people that aren't including myself, I think that was yeah. a really disappointment, yeah, especially when, so. in comparison yeah. with Heavy Rain. So they want, they're going to want to make this like the return to form for them. So I think they're going to take more and more time to make it as polished as it possibly can be. And as you've said, fall is packed. And if they're, if they're really going to release Detroit and Gran Turismo in the fall, Days Gone is just going to be left on the road to die, especially if you look at next year with the potentially Last of Us 2, God of War, um, Spider Man and all these other exclusives that they got lined up, and then E3 this year, which is going to add on more to the list. They've got to pick their releases carefully. So I think Quantic Dream's going to be pushed back into 2018, and Days Gone will be that that Christmas exclusive. But the thing with Days Gone, though, on it, well, like I mean, we haven't seen no what like almost like a whole year now. But last, I remember last time we saw it, it was like it looked really far from finished, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But it'll be interesting to see what we see. Anyway. But next game I've got wrote down is Uncharted The Lost Legacy. Now, to me, this is coming out somewhere in September, early October, mm. because they want to get in yeah. just after Destiny and just yeah. before the slew of the big annual shooters like COD, or the big annual games like COD, Assassin's Creed, uh, Red Dead if it comes out, and then the potential exclusive like Days Gone, Detroit, Spider-Man, whatever. So they're going to have to pick that carefully because if, if they mm. release Uncharted around the window of Red Dead, it's just going to get drowned out, and I don't think they want that. I think they'd want that to pick it smart and if you play it smart they'll play it ju- they'll release it just after destiny 2 and just before the mm. annual slew i think it'll be early october i think yeah yeah, yeah. Maybe, yeah. i think it's gonna be before that i feel like well, it's gonna be, yeah maybe even uh, like yeah july august september that's what i think i think before really? anything else really, yeah. really? competing yeah. with shadow of war yeah well when is shadow of more that's august right yeah, yeah, it's August, and then they've got Crash in June, and they've got Wipeout in the summer well, as well. Yeah, the very end of Which I'm sure, like, like he game, tweeted, but... they're not going to be finished with the game until, like, you know, five months from now, which is September. Are you? Yeah. He made that tweet about, yeah, I don't know. I feel like, I mean, they're making discs as well, so they're going to have to manufacture it. I mean, that's not going to take that much time, but I don't know. I feel like it will be early October. That's just my gut feeling. Mm, I mean, I made a video on all these games, but, like, like in the release dates, but. And when was Destiny? That's September 8th or something, right? Yeah, it's September eighth or so. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, coming out September eighth. But yeah, it, yeah, in my opinion, I think it's going to be coming yeah. out end of September, early October. That's my prediction. It's possible. Yeah. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna see it at E3, of course, in two months. Yeah. We're gonna get a release date for sure. Uh, All right. Well, yeah, the I... next game I've got written down is Gran Turismo. This is easily the, uh, the whatever the happens year. with the exclusive yeah. games. I don't think that's yeah. End of the year, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah no, they'll definitely no. release it end of this year. There's no point in releasing. It got it. delayed from last year, right? Yep, it did. Yeah, it did. Yeah. yeah okay yeah this yeah is anyone going to dispute that it's end not going to come out end of nah, this year it'll come out by the end nah. of this year yeah yeah all right that's fair enough next one's detroit i think this one's going to be dependent on on the last of us 2's release date which i'll get onto in a minute right. but i think detroit's going to be coming really? out sometime right. yeah sometime in spring 2018 maybe the last even of us later. probably not going to come out until like Wait, either last late 2018 that's fall 2018 or, or maybe even 2019 yeah. No, I'm thinking Last of Us 2 Summer 2018. I'll get on to why in a minute. Really? Still? I but, really like, honestly, but I'll talk about that in a minute. But in terms of Detroit, I think Detroit's going to be coming out in some time in the spring, maybe even later, maybe even the fall at, at an extent. Because, really? they, again, like I said before, Quantic Dream are going to want to take every last measure or every last last bit of effort that they can and really refine this game to make it that return to form the heavy rain was. And Beyond Two Souls was a bit of a disappointment. So they're going to want to rectify any any mistakes or disappointments they made with that game so yeah mm-hmm. but what do you guys think about the truth 
I think it was probably going to come out maybe, I'd say the same as you, probably somewhere around the spring of 2018, I'd probably yeah. say. Maybe I'd even say pushing into summer. Yeah, maybe maybe pushing into summer, but I would probably say most likely spring. I think that's yeah. probably a good time to release it, to be honest. I mean, they would have at least gotten a good about, you know, four, maybe even four and a half years of development. So I think that would have been enough to, you know, correct the mistakes that they made with Beyond Two Souls. So I'm going to put probably... February. Yeah. Yeah, February. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah, because it's going to be right after, you know, the whole slew of like the holiday season. It's going to be kind of like what Horizon did, where, you know, it was kind of ready around the fall season, but they pushed it back. I mean, I'm, I think that was, you know, for development, but it also yeah. like just in general is a good idea because of like, you know, obviously that's, you know, for the big AAA games that come out. Mm -hmm. I think February is a good idea because that's going to be coming out before like the big spring 2018 exclusive, whether that's going to be Days Gone or God of War. And mm -hmm. it's also going to still get an exclusive in those early months. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Robin, do you do you think do you think the choice is gonna come out end of the year or twenty eighteen? No, I think February twenty eighteen is exactly uh, sounds very yeah that sounds like that's what it's gonna be. Yeah. Yeah. All right, fair enough. Next one I wrote down was Spider Man. I think this one's gonna come out Summer around the yes yeah, so around the time of the film. I think it'll come out well, a good what? month or mo maybe a month or two before. Isn't the film coming this year. Yeah, I think the film is this year, right? Yeah, it is this year. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Twenty seventeen. Yeah, but see, that's, that's why that's why so many people are saying uh, that that's why there's been that huge debate where people are saying the oh, they're going to release it alongside the movie, or that some people are saying it's going to release along alongside the Blu-ray release, like at the end of the year. So I thought the yeah. whole thing with Spider-Man this time was that they really wanted to pretty much actually. I mean, they didn't care too much for the movie, as in they didn't want to make it per se like a tie-in with the movie. They they just want to make a good yeah, quality well, Spider-Man game. Has no tie-ins with the movie whatsoever. So it, yeah, exactly. So they just want to make a good quality Spider-Man game, and I think in terms of release date they're just going to release it whenever they feel it's ready and whenever it's finished and yeah that's probably going to be like summer 2018 i mean that's exactly what i was saying yeah. for like june july season i mean yeah i've always said that it's going to come out like in 2018 because in, like the game doesn't even have a proper title yet you know so yeah exactly it's a code name how is this going to be like the first ps4 game like exclusive to come out this year like yeah. in this, this it's, it's yeah we haven't, we haven't, we haven't seen anything about... for quite a while so I mean, I don't know where I the fuck I was thinking. That. I thought the Spider-Man movie was coming out early next year, but either way, they're gonna. I think they're gonna want to really. I know it's got no tie-ins to the movie, but they're gonna want to have at least a partial bit of that the hype surrounding the movie just to get drive sales yeah, a bit more because it would it would make sense to have it released somewhere in the field of the film, even if it's got no tie-ins. Um, and I know it's a yeah. standalone thing, but I think they're gonna want to take some of the hype into the game. And if people come out that movie and the movie's a success, they're gonna look at the game and think, okay, I'm in a, the mood for Spider-Man, as it as it were. Uh, so I don't think it'll release anywhere further than maybe two, three months away from the film's release, whether that's before or after, probably after. But that's, that would be that's yeah, making it this year. There's no way. Yeah, yeah. It's it's still this year. Happen, the movie's coming yeah. in the summer. No, I don't, I don't know. Like but it'll be July, July, I think. Um, or August, I don't know. Yeah. Like, I know Spider-Man, like, it, it's going to still sell well, even if it comes out in the fall season. Yeah, that's what I think, too. They don't need to rely on the movie that much, honestly. Yeah, it's still going to sell well no matter what. Because mm. the hype so far has been real. Like, I, I'm already seeing a lot of talk about the Spider-Man game, so they really don't need the movie that much, I think. Mm. Yeah. Be interesting. Anyway, next one I've got down is God of War. I think this one's going to come out somewhere in early 2018, whether it be about March, April, around that time. Um, just because I think the game looks quite... Po I mean, we haven't seen much of it. We've only really seen a trailer. But it looks quite polished in my opinion. I don't think it looks like a game that is is a ways off. I don't think um, it's. It, I don't think it's a Last of Us or Death Stranding situation, which could be uh, maybe even a year or even further from now. But I think God of War is going to be coming out sometime. Um, probably yes, probably spring twenty eighteen. I'd say. Anyway, yeah. what do you yeah. think? March, April, spring. Yeah, that's area. Yeah. Right. Anyone yeah, else think about yeah. the same? I'd say yeah. Uh... Yeah. That's the reason why I think Days Gone won't come out until like August of 2018, honestly, because mm -hmm. they've had like such trouble with the development. And I know like it's going to be ready. It's like one of the big things. But like when I see God of War and just the way the progress has been going and just based on what we've seen, the gameplay looked way more polished than like, you know, what Days Gone showed. And I feel like Sony Ben, I don't know. I feel like they're going to be like in August. I'm not sure. But yeah. All right. Kind of well, next one I've got down is The Last of Us 2. Now, I think this one is going <sighs> to... What I, I've got this little theory, and this is probably wrong, but I think it's gonna come out summer 2018. 20, and the reason I crazy. think that, that no, the reason I think that I think the game's more done than a lot of people make it out to be. Now, again, we've got that thing about that 
segment that we saw at PSX, uh, they were planning on whether to show it at PSX or at E3. They chose PSX, but that was recorded a few years ago. I think we've, with the, I think when they say early development, I think that's a cover up to give them more time than they actually need. Um, and another thing is this game. I know this is a bit of a bullshit conclusion, but this game comes out exact what um, takes place five years yeah, after the original. Yeah, was talking yeah, about, yeah, this is a bit of a bullshit thing, but I think the game, the original game, came out summer 2013. To have that game come out five years later, that'd be quite cool to see. Like, you know, we've sort of not so much grown up with these characters, but seeing them progress yeah. over the last five years. Yeah, and then okay. it'd be cool to see, like, okay, this is exactly five years ago. Where was I five years ago? Where was Ellie and Joel five years ago? This is where they are now. This is where I am now. Um, but this is the same kind of thing as like, I remember people were speculating you had out, Outbreak Day, right? So that was like somewhere in 2013 at the end of the year and people were expecting a crazy announcement or like, oh, Uncharted 4 is going to be announced on that day and nothing happened. It's like, it's, I think, yeah, I get what you're saying and it's it's cool, but I don't think they're really going to, you know, that's not going to matter. Like the, the fact that it's per, per se five years later, it's about delivering a quality game. And if you look at Naughty Dog, I mean, they they wrapped up Uncharted 4, of course, uh, last year. And now they're all also doing the Lost Legacy, which they're very busy with. With. there's just I, in my opinion no way that the last was will release literally in like a year from now almost uh it's it's gonna be fall 2018 would be early in my opinion now that i think about it uh early it's, it's probably gonna be early 2019 that's what i think or maybe summer say, 2019 say someone else who agrees with me it's 2019 thank god for that i, yeah. I think i think <laughs> exactly i would probably say yeah the same i would say at the very earliest probably spring 2019 only because wow. i think what he do and i say this only because i know naughty dog are gonna gonna want to take this time with this game because i mean you've still got the load the, the the select few people that think that you know the last of us the original game was such a masterpiece that you can't make a sequel to it i think they're no, gonna want to take their time with this to make to prove mm. all of them wrong that this this sequel it can work and also in a strange way and i don't know i don't know how to put it but make the first game better by having this sequel so that you know the story threads make sense and things like that i, I don't know what i mean but basically just prove all of them wrong so they're going to want to take their time with it to ensure that that happens and so i'd probably say 2019 spring 2019 yeah. at the earliest for me well this is that, the there's no rush i mean there's like a bunch of exclusives right i mean yeah yeah, yeah. and I, I would have bought into a 2018 release date or like said that that's possible uh if the, if naughty dog wasn't doing the lost legacy right now as well because that's just it's too much it's too much that that's really how i feel yeah I mean, and we also got they're, the, not, like, they're not like full like throttle with all their team right now i mean they're still like making lost legacy right now yeah exactly going yeah, we also got that, um, you know, the Game Informer thing where uh, Evan Well said he literally just got the story pitch. So right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they've been going out of the way to say this is early development. There's got to be a reason for that. Yeah. True. And there's like no other Sony exclusive that's been like titled as early development besides like Spider-Man, maybe with the working title, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, don't, just where I'm coming from with that thing about the five years later, I just think it'll give off a, 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 the, a the last yeah, but that's, game. that's like, but that's like, there's no like, I don't know, like no, but Uncharted Four was like that, that too. Just make it cool or yeah, something. I mean, at the end of the day, they're just making a good game. They want to get good sales. You want to, you know, do you yeah. really want Naughty Dog to like make this title like mediocre just because they want to make it cool five years? Yeah. Five years later? Like I get, I get what you mean with the, you know, like growing up with the characters and stuff. But like, you know, Uncharted Four did that too, because doesn't Uncharted Four take take place in 2014? Because it takes it place takes three years well, after. Unch officially it takes place three years after uncharted 3 yeah but, but yeah but nobody really cares about the timeline and as as much in that game and the same will count for the last was i think it's just about oh it takes place five years later it, that doesn't necessarily mean it takes place now or it took place you know two years ago or whatever like it's it's just five years later you know that's all it's about and it's the, the game just has to be good and it's naughty dog they need that time it's a big game that they need to make so uh uh, yeah, I mean, I would I would love for it to come out in 2018 and be completely finished, of course, and up to the level of quality that we expect from them. I just don't think it's it's happening. Well, I mean, what you said about the thing about the Lost Legacy uh, and The Last of Us 2 both being in development, I think it's kind of a similar situation to with Uncharted 3 and The Last of Us, where Uncharted 3 was hindered because of development of The Last of Us and the two teams split. I know it's a mm -hmm. bit different because the two teams haven't exactly split. It's just a smaller team working on on the lost legacy but i don't know i just think the, uh, again it's probably bullshit but i just think it's the last of us is a really emotional game and a lot of people really care about these characters so i just think it'd give off a big level of emotional resonance uh, to have that thing of like okay we've grown up they've grown up but i, I don't i don't know i mean i know what you mean it could come out for 2018 they'll, they'll probably need that time but i just think it's further into the de development than i, I think that, that's being made out i think they're just giving themselves a bit of like padding to get the game out 
um, just in case they do need that few months That's of delays crazy. because like, it's not well, out of the realm of possibility that it could get like, delayed. You gotta like you gotta think like October, like around the time that you know October and Uncharted Lost Legacy finishes and they move people over, then you're looking at what oh we're gonna launch this game in eight months, like Last of Us Part Two already in eight months after Lost Legacy. But you're saying Lost Legacy is a smaller team, but I think Lost Legacy right now is the biggest team. Uh, because that that's the game that needs to be finished at the moment and that just needs to get out the door literally all the programmers and the, and the game designers are working on that game right now it's only the people writing the story doing the mocap and, and all the pre-production work that are you know those are currently doing i think uh, all the work for the last of us so that when the lost legacy is done the full team can, can really jump on it and the game can actually start being made so i don't think the last of us is that far yet into development sadly yeah well it'll be interesting to see i get what you mean but i mean i'm just gonna stick i think I think summer 2018 is definitely a plausible plausible thing, but it'll be dependent on what we see at E3. It'll be dependent on what we see at PSX, the leaks that come out and what Neil and the team has to say about it in the upcoming months. But yeah. If we'd see gameplay this E3, then that's uh, that's a surprise. And then it means it's it's further along than we think. But I think we're going to see a trailer and the gameplay will follow at like PSX at the end I of this year. I feel it'll just be like Uncharted 4 where we get that exactly. trailer. We got the gameplay for Uncharted 4 at PSX of 2014. So if we get it at PSX now, that would be kind of similar. And then Uncharted 4 came out in May 2016, one and a half years later. So yeah, but same... I think with the Uncharted 4, though, I think that adds a much more troubled development cycle than The Last of Us 2 will have, of course, with Amy, the the whole engine, Amy Hennig situation right. and all that shit. But that was only for the story, though, and that was really in that pre-production phase still, because The Last of Us was only released in 2013, and around that time was actually when the Amy Hennig debacle was going on uh, about the story. So they really needed to also start actually working on that game at that point still, I think. So I I don't think it's that big of a difference at all. And yeah, I mean, I'd say look at the Uncharted 4 trajectory, really, from when it was announced, when we saw that E3 trailer in 2014, that was already by the time they had established a new team. Uh, the gameplay at PSX 2014, and then the game came out one and a half years later. And I think the same will happen with The Last of Us. I have a question for everybody here. Like, is Robin's mic like glitching out for everybody else too? Or is that just kind me? of? It yeah. is. Just a little it's, bit. Yeah, it's, it's going 50 50 one time, one minute. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like ripping. I'm just making sure, like, it's not that bad. I'm not like trying to like say this switching the mic. I'm just saying, like, I was just making sure that everybody else knew. It's good though. It's yeah, fine. No, it's right. It's all right. Yeah. By the way, the next one I've got wrote down is Death Strand. And now I think this is at the earliest well, fall yeah, 2019, at the fucking earliest. This game is yeah. a ways off. And the reason I think that is the I don't think what we saw what excuse me, what we saw already is gonna be like exactly implemented into the game, like them trailers that we saw. Um I think that was just to give off a vibe of what they and don't forget this is an open world game, so this is gonna need some fucking niche nurturing uh care from kojima i think the game's going to be brilliant but i just think it's it's way further off that i don't think we're going to see anything of it at e3 this year uh, at all because I, I think that's that that's a game that's really early in development um but yeah what do you guys think yeah i don't yeah, think well, that they have the engine so like it's not i mean that could be a game that could potentially even be like a kind of like a twilight zelda twilight princess where it could come out develop for p or breath of the wild develop for ps4 and then put on to the ps5 there's like, no way that ps5 is coming out in 2019 though no not 2019 i'd say like 2020 around that yeah. time that, 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 but uh, that's what i mean didn't kojima like say that it's going to be out for ps4 though like because of concerns about yeah, that he said so but it's going to yeah. come out on ps4 for sure no, it's I mean, PS4 I'm... for sure. I'm just saying it, could, it has that possibility yeah, yeah, yeah. that it could come oh, out okay. that late that it could yeah. be put onto the PS5. We're talking about remasters for PS5. <laughs> yeah, but what do you think, Robin? What do you think about that? Yeah, no, it's 2019. That's what I would say. Yeah, it's it's just it's been it's it's announced way too early. Kojima just like uh, started his new team, so he's he has a lot of stuff to still do, and I don't think we're gonna see gameplay this year at E3 either. So yeah, I don't uh, mind the early announcement. I like seeing like he's kind of being more open about this project and being yeah. like for his fans more than. Yeah, exactly. That's cool, but I don't. Yeah, it's it's still quite a while away. Yeah, mm-hmm. ways off. And... I think it's fifty fifty whether it's showing at E3. I mean, I feel like he's been doing the six month cycle where he's showing something new every six months, but yeah. like. Exactly. I guess it's just I guess it's just it goes either way. I mean we've already seen quite a bit of the game. Like well we say that for like, you know, we've already seen like three trailers or so. Two. Well, not really actually two. no two trailers, but like yeah, he announced it back at fall of twenty well no, like December twenty fifteen he announced the studio. Then he yeah. announced Death Stranding in um what's it called twenty sixteen to three. Yeah. Then again he followed it with another trailer at Game Awards six months later. So he's been kinda of like doing more news, like you know, every six months at the end of the mm-hmm. year and midway cycles, but yeah, I mean, I feel like he'll show something just to show his fans something, but it's also possible that he could just skip out. 
But I mean, we've already seen two cinematic trailers, so do you think we're going to get another cinematic trailer? Because there's no way in hell he's going to be showing gameplay if he shows anything of it. Do you think there's any point in really showing another trailer, especially if it's a new cinematic? I mean, it gets us all really excited, you know? I think it does, but I mean, we're already excited that it's a Kojima game and we've seen some cinematics. We know some of the celebrities who are in it. Um, so I just don't think there's any point in showing an A3. If you're going to show another cinematic trailer, it's kind of like it's not going to have the same effect as it did the PSX. So there's and there's no way they're going to show gameplay. So I just don't see the point. Yeah. But yeah. Anyway, I'm next ta- next game I've got wrote down is the Sucker Punch new IP. Now I think this is coming. I'm probably a lot of people think that it that's late into development. I don't think it is at all. I think that's going to be coming out sometime in 2019. I say early 2019, based on what yeah. T Duck said. But then again, you could take it with a grain of salt. Mm-hmm. But I mean, just thinking about that, that's like five years later. But I feel like this game either is in troubled development, which is possible. No, well, I mean, they, or, I, I mean you say trouble development, but like there's, you know, kind of like a gray line there. I mean, you know, maybe they're just taking their time, which is honestly what I really want. But I mean, I see exclusives like, you know, Spider-Man, God of War, Days Gone. I feel like I see 2018 that like that most of those games are going to be lining up around those years. I feel mm-hmm. like, you know, you can't really squeeze in Sucker Punch's new IP within all those things. I feel like Sucker Punch is going to take their time. And I, I'd say like March 2019. I mean, I don't want to put a month to it already because we haven't even heard from the game, but like, just yeah. I'd say early 2019, but it could definitely be like a summer 2019. Just yeah, first time. it's too because they're only going to be showing a teaser at this year's E3, so yeah. or rumored to anyway. So I, just but I would take that with a grain of salt because it is TDX, but yeah. Well, yeah, but I mean, if we would have seen something by the game by now, if it was going to come out next year or this year, yeah. it's, there's no way it's coming out. I think what they're going to do is a gameplay review of the E3 actually immediately. Really? Uh, yeah. Like, like, well, like God of War, like Days Gone did, like Horizon did when they announced it. It's like, uh, they, you know, it's a new IP that they really need to prove themselves with. Do that, like you don't want to see it. Like, I, I love Naughty like how they do the cinematic trailers, but man, it's great to like see gameplay yeah. and announcement. And yeah, like, totally. Mm. Interesting. Interesting. And then the last game I've got wrote down is Dreams. This is getting cancelled. Oh. Simple as that. <laughs> That's getting cancelled or shit nah. out, so no one's going to yeah. buy it. So there's no, there's no, it's a lost, lost with that game. I mean, Media Molecule always sounds like, you know, I'm looking, well, I'm not looking forward to Dreams by any stretch of the mention, but I'm definitely going to, like, check it out because it is Media Molecule. I love Little Planet. I mean, yeah. 3 was, like, well, that wasn't made by them, but, like, they, I mean, to me, they kind of made it, like, a little sidestep, at least personally, with Tearaway. I didn't really find that, you know, yeah. as to quality as Little Planet, like, what 1 and 2 was able to do. I feel like, I don't know what Dreams is trying to do, though. That's the thing. Yeah. I feel like they're showing off all these creations. We don't know, like, what is it going to be like. Is there going to be, like, a campaign that they made levels for? I'm guessing that's what it's going to be. You play levels. Um, that they made in the studio, but I think there's a guy that visited the studio recently, and he was talking about how it's pretty cool, and uh, there's a lot more to it than you think. It's all that, like some fan that mm. visited the Molecule. Yeah. Mm. Honestly, that's like the the hardest exclusive to predict, honestly, because that's like we've seen that ever since like the PS4 reveal, which is crazy, because like that was announced yeah. before, like almost a year before the PS4 came out. Yeah. And now we're talking about already being midway through the PS4's life cycle, which is crazy. Well, I mean, with, with regards to Media Molecule, I think that. Don't get me wrong, I think Little Big Planet's a good series. I think Tearaway's a decent game, series. but they don't really release like big hitting games. I mean, Little Big Planet 2 is probably the best game from them, but the two obsessed with like this whole idea of creativity and uh, <laughs> creative tools that it's kind of like, when are they going to release, like, no offense, like a proper game? Because Tearaway was kind of like a light, plaf- light hearted platform and not that different to, to Little Big Planet, especially in its. I like it's, what they do, though. I don't know. And it's yeah. genre. I don't know. I like what they do, but I just think it's dreams. Really, the, is there any point in releasing this? One, it's not being hyped up whatsoever. Yeah. No one gives a shit about seen, this we've game. We've not seen enough of it either. No. Two, the concept is okay, but is it going to be one of those games that's like, okay, that was innovative, but am I going to play it for an hour and never touch it again? Um, and three, if they were that confident in it, they would have shown more by now, or at least talked about it, because this is such a forgotten game, and it sounds like it's a ways off as well. And I don't know, are they going to just release it and shit it out and it just bombs commercially? Or is this just going to get silently cancelled? I think it's going to get silently cancelled. But... Maybe. Yeah. I mean, that's definitely the exclusive. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, it seems like it's not really going anywhere right now, but Aww. I feel like they definitely have some. I feel like this is going to come out one way or another. I mean, like, you can't just, I don't know. I feel like Media Molecule has been working on this for like the longest time. And just, I don't know. I, I don't, yeah, I feel like they're just uncertain where they're going with this. Yeah, I mean, exactly. It's like what... the, it's like Media Molecule don't we don't know what it is, and neither do they. Do they, they don't know what they're yeah. making. They just sort of like I mean, throwing sh- paint at the wall and hoping, or throwing shit at the wall and hoping it for it to. Spin. I mean, at the very least, I mean, if they release this, it's just gonna be like you know, kind of like the tools and maybe some like default yeah. levels that they give you to like see, and then you make your own stuff. But I'm just hoping that right now they're just like figuring out what they want to do with this. I mean, hopefully by now they figure that out, and like they're just I like, hope so. like just like I don't know, I don't know what they're doing with it. But from what we've seen, like with the tools and everything. 
and what they've been able to make seems like it's pretty cool. But it kind of seems like another example for people that like, actually create it. But yeah, they're just getting obsessed over creative tools and not actually thinking about the actual game. But yeah, I don't know. If we don't see this at E3, man, that's just gonna be. It's yeah, gonna be canceled. Yeah. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. If it's not, it was on a sizzle reel and like. Was it? Yeah. Was it shown at PSX? Yeah, it was no, on that... a sizzle reel for like yeah, two seconds. Sizzle but like, wow, yeah, that's sizzle reel for two seconds. <laughs> and then didn't? And then Shuhei Yoshida came out at that uh, Detroit, and it was on a sizzle reel for games confirmed for 2017. Detroit oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Dreams were both on that, but Shuhei mm. Yoshida mm. then came out and said that was a mistake. They shouldn't have been on there. So mm. again, that kind of. Not so much backs the theory that the I mean, will be coming out this year, but well, um, that's, well that could be that they're not certain. Them, but, I mean, I just, don't, I just don't think it will. Yeah, yeah I I still think oh, going back to Detroit. Yeah, I don't think that's coming this year. I think February is safe, but Robin, do you yeah, have any dreams? Just going back to dreams. I don't know. Do you have any opinions on dreams? Yeah, no. Ex- I mean, it's I I didn't even know. I really don't can't predict that game. It's crazy, but uh, I I I could see it. Um, yeah, maybe just being thrown out somewhere in 2018 and just i don't think sony really cares much for it or no they don't no 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 yeah i, I don't know i really don't know with that game but yeah same. that's all the games that's like the hardest game pretty just yeah. like remasters crash jack why crash out. already has released it so does yeah, exactly. Wipeout. Yeah. exactly so yeah that's it i think that's all this because if we covered them haven't we yeah yeah, yeah that's and we've got e3 to look forward to what do you think about e3 by the way because we've already seen like a shit ton of stuff do you have like and there's a lot of studios we know are making games and what yeah that's the making. thing it's like do you have any yeah. idea of what could be shown like new things and shit yeah sucker punch is new ip that's about it yeah like that's the thing right they like basically all of sony's first party studios we saw what they've been working on like we know what they're working on now so that's why i'm saying yeah like yeah. this is going to be more of a year of like third party with destiny 2 battlefront and then also sprinkled in with more stuff from last year's or maybe we're gonna maybe we're gonna get Bloodborne too if they do that. That would be pretty oh, that's, yeah. That's, I feel like yeah, Bloodborne yeah. too and Sucker Punch's new IP are like the only two new things we could possibly get. That and maybe Ready at Dawn, but I feel like Ready at Dawn's not really doing anything. Oh yeah, maybe Ready at Dawn. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, I don't, Dawn, yeah. maybe. I don't know. yeah. But I mean, uh, Sony, Sony have kind of like shown all the cards of the past two E3s, and their past two E3s have been fucking excellent and same with yeah. PSX. So it's interesting to see this year that. I don't think they'll be able to follow it up. I think it'll just be an okay conference. They might. I mean, you know, they could come out with some studio we forget about and. I don't know, they released some fucking big new IPs, but I just don't see that happening. I think it's going to be, actually, it's going to be, it's going to be surprising because, uh, yeah, we all expect this now. I do think that, yeah, at least with Infamous, or sorry, with uh, the Sucker Punch new IP, or with, uh, yeah, Bloodborne 2, and hopefully one or two things we simply can't think about, but that are going to be pretty big. Uh, I mean, they need to come with something because they're up against the Scorpio with the Xbox, or, you know, with the Xbox Scorpio. So it can, they, they can, can just do Nintendo's more Switch, Don't forget that Nintendo's conference yeah. Yeah. this year. Are they? Well, you say that, but... Well, Reggie, <laughs> Reggie says that, but I mean, it's Reggie. Yeah, but Reggie oh, yeah, well. Never trust him. Never trust him. <laughs> cool. like, that's like the least I'd be saying. No, yeah. but... Yeah, I mean it's interesting because we've already seen so much. I think it's just I think this year's conference is just going to be like a step backwards. Like it'll be like we'll have too step much back. on indies, too much. Well, I, I love indies, but I think it'll be like a bit too long. They I don't think have, gonna have a lot on VR. Like I feel like they have a lot of games I need to show off more of. Yeah, but yeah, it'll yeah, kind of just be that it won't be the bit. We might have a Bloodborne two and a new a new game. I feel like, like Bloodborne two might wait for PSX honestly or something. I don't know. I feel like it's too big. I feel like we'll get Sucker Punch mm. IP. But when you sprinkle on like timing with third party, you know, they have to show off new stuff for Destiny 2. But I, don't, I feel like this year will be more about third party more than ever. Yeah, just it'll just be like 20, like a, a big part of VR, a big part of Indies, big part of like, yeah, I mean, if you, you, yeah. know, if you know about like the trailer, like Days Gone, Spider Man, whatever, mm-hmm. they decide to show Sucker Punch teaser. I mean, um, I'd be fine if they, sh- they just showed Sucker Punch because we have so much on the horizon. No yeah. content, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah. Horizon DLC, actually, that's a possibility, actually. Oh, yeah, the expansion mm. or something, right? I reckon yeah. we'll see a new Horizon game in 2019, by the way, just saying. 2019, yeah. It's, uh... 2019 or 2020. He's... I mean, people say that, like, because they, they have the engine, but, like, creating that much of a detailed world and all, I don't even know how they'd be able to do that. I mean, it's possible, like, I don't know, like, I mean, that's definitely possible, but, like, man. This... Gorilla Cambridge could be working on a new kill zone as well. We've... They got cancelled. <laughs> Which? Gorilla Cambridge that made rigs, they got oh, yeah. shut down. Oh, yeah, yeah, they did, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They got shut down after rigs, which sucks because all they gave them was like Vita and VR projects, <laughs> and they failed because of the platform, not their games. Their games were actually yeah, good. Exactly. And then it's like it sucks for them because like they're a talented studio, but they keep getting assigned to like dead platform. Well, VR is not dead. It's just you know it needs to be proven. I mean, I have my own VR myself, and I'm loving it. But like, yeah. 
this this E3 is going to be interesting because it'll be like Sony showing the same stuff. It'll be Microsoft trying to come out with new IPs. They're probably not going to. And then Nintendo's new first E3 with a new console behind them. So that'll be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. There's just yeah. so much I want to see more of, like Spider-Man, God of War, Days Gone. Yeah. It's gonna be packed, and it's gonna be awesome. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, that pretty much wraps everything up. So we covered our four segments. Um, Robin, is there anything you want to say before we end things? Or uh, not really. I mean, thanks for having me. I hope the mic wasn't too bad at the end. I, I don't know if it's <laughs> still good. bad. He says yeah. it's the mic breaking on. <laughs> 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 But yeah, it was cool. Always, uh, always nice to talk about games. So uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah. yeah. No, Anything no. else you guys would like to add? Nah, I guess I don't know. No. I, Jaden always says if you like listen to us on SoundCloud. I mean, it's gonna be on there. But yeah. Yeah. yeah How cool would it be if Jaden just came in? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Hey guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, once again, if you want to check it out on SoundCloud, we'll leave the link to that. It's uh, SoundCloud.com/slash gaming at its core. So you can check it out on the go if you want it or anything like that. Um. And yeah, that pretty much wraps up Gaming at its core, episode four. So yeah, we hope you enjoyed and we'll see you guys next time. See ya. See ya.